great action-packed game, hopefully, of not not LCS. And we are seeing the return of Spicy Pandas uh, going up against AFS. Um, and I am partnered by my good friend, FN, carried by Senna. Uh, after the previous game, how do you feel going into this one? Um, we saw a good showing from uh, SP. It wasn't the cleanest, but... It was a bloodbath, and you know we love seeing a goddamn good ass bloodbath. So we're hoping to see another one here, as we get uh, as we start uh, pick bands. Uh, interesting. Uh, they start off with a Cinnabon. Um, I I don't think they realize you're not playing. People just scared of that champ. Is I, I think it's just focus. Like they just don't like Cinna. Equality on the rift, please. Um, coming through with the Rengar ban and the uh, Galio ban, definitely um, Rengar targeted toward AFS's top laner. He is a pretty solid Rengar, uh, one trick on, up there in the top lane. Galio just a good solid uh, ban in general. Let me see the talent in Diana ban for the side of AFS towards uh, SP. Good bans, honestly. Matt being a talent player and Diana just being a fucking dog shit of a champion that can just one shot people easily. No. How do you feel about just letting the echo through, or even Bill Cosby's Yasuo that um, he's put a lot of time onto? Um, after seeing the way he handled echo the previous two games, I would be a little bit hesitant to give him the echo again. I feel like he's definitely going to pick that one up, or his uh, patented pick, Yasuo. Yeah, I definitely would not want to put Bill Cosby on a comfort pick. He's been actually pretty decent in the mid lane, being uh, a force to uh, actually be reckoned with uh, soloing out players, but also giving the CC that his team needs to actually win fights. Yep, and we see uh, Nidalee come in, um, which is uh, interesting. Uh, really good jungler if um, utilized correctly. I don't like the pairing of Nidalee Nar, so I, I would really uh, like to see how she's going to pilot through this uh, game, especially into a Hecarim Annie uh, counter pick. Honestly, I really do like the Lulu pick, though, for the side of AFS. I, I love Lulu Top, if that is Lulu Top. Oh, man. Lulu with Hecarim in general is just disgusting. Mm -hmm. Give the pony more um, cracked out speed, and he will run through the enemy team for sure. And it is yeah. the Yasuo. So, uh, we haven't seen him on Yasuo quite yet, uh, but this will be the first time. So, I'm excited to see um, what he brings uh, on the Yasuo after seeing his pretty solid play with the Echo play. <clears throat> okay. And uh, interesting note, by the way, um, this is a sub top laner for the um AFS lineup. Uh, this villain to Katie. Uh, it's their first game, uh, of the tournament. So I'm excited to see what they can really pull out. On this top lane, Lulu. And we have a Shin ban and Leona ban. Good solid bans on the side of AFS. Both really powerful picks if you don't know how to handle them. And a No ban and a Jinx ban on the side of SP. Uh, definitely witnessing FN carry by Senna's uh, Jinx play and not wanting that to be in their games. Indeed, Jinx is being a really strong hyper carry, but there are still many hyper carries that are still left available on the side of Kai'Sa and Bane, who mm -hmm. are both picked. Yeah, and as we know, I'll. Last night, uh, we had a vein game from the man himself, uh, and he played it really well. Um, managed to get into the late game stages, uh, which is where you want to be as a vein player, and uh, piloted the champion pretty efficiently. The last two locks in being Aatrox and Morgana. Oh, which so with Kaisa Aatrox, 
I guess they didn't line up their team because I, I'm assuming it's the Lulu support now with the Aatrox going top. I couldn't imagine Aatrox being nope, the support. That is Aatrox support. Okay. Um, I guess it was a little miscommunication. Um, but I, I think we have it figured out now. And like you said, Morgana support coming in for, on the side of Vayne, which is a pretty strong pick. A lot of complications in drafting a day um, for the not not LCS, it seems. Well, I'm ready to get into this game and see if it's a little bit closer of a contest. Uh, we haven't had much uh, action today as far as uh, games. So, that being said, we're getting ready to load onto the rift. Just waiting... Um, for the spectator delay to go through. On the side of AFS, what do you like about it? I like the Hecarim, but I also... See, I actually like the, the side of AFS's team because <clears throat> as you also like to play, if you are going to play Hecarim with Kai'Sa, Heck, he just gives her a way to get to the back line freely with the uh, <clears throat> his E putting a stack of the path Kaisa's plasma passive on them, so she could just jump straight back there with the Lulu speeding up the Hecarimin, and he just easily just gets to the back line anyway by just like proto belting or flash tibber, tibbers. It's just a nice team comp to look at if played correctly. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree because on the side of SP, you have a lot of one shot potential um coming from Annie, so she could nuke at least four out of five of their champions with ease. Not only that, they have Aatrox a major threat as well while the Hecarim's running through. And as you said, Hecarim will give us a great opportunity for Kai'Sa to ult anywhere in the team fight. Um, now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, we do have SP's draft. Uh, Nartop um, should play decently into the Lulu since he is uh, ranged a little bit easier time. Um, Lulu normally gets played into melee. Or, I mean, uh, into, sorry, the lineup is messing me up. Nar into the Aatrox. Because uh, it is melee into range, so naturally he has a little bit of an advantage there. Um, I think Nidalee's going to have a hard time this game. Just because she doesn't have many solid gank options overall. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I assume she's just going to power farm most of it. And Yasuo has no real setup. So he has to set himself up. Uh, which is interesting draft idea. Since he has only one real way to ult. So it's easy to pinpoint that and avoid um, if you're aware during the team fights. So I think SB can win, but it's just going to be a tough uh, executed team. Indeed, indeed. <coughs> be very confident in Bill Copy's ability to hit his tornadoes, or for him to play off the NAR uh, aughts that might be landed on towards the side of AFS. But yeah, I also agree that Nidalee probably will be power farming most of this game. Unless Morg hits a bind or Lulu just oversteps. Yeah, it's definitely going to come more from the misplay of uh, AFS than the actual outplay of SP. And like like you said with the NAR setup on Yasuo, NAR's one of those picks, he has small windows of teamfight. Um, and if you miss those windows, you kind of have to concede whatever you're trying to fight around or fight for. So, Very true. I'd like to see if this player on our can actually come through and pilot this champion accordingly. And we're about to load on to the rift. <coughs> I would assume we wouldn't have any kind of cheeky play any invade or anything like that. No, I don't think so. I don't think... I mean... Yeah, no, I, I don't see it happening, really. Unless maybe Morgana Q into a Nidalee yeah. Q, yeah, but that's all I could really expect. But yeah, um, so interesting note here. Um, Lulu opts into the Guardian, uh, instead of Aerie. Um, so you might know a little bit more about that. How do you feel about that uh, choice? So. As we are seeing, this is actually Lulu's support and Aatrox top, but they're a bit out of position. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about. I, I just feel like you get more benefit from the the airy 
I like the area more for the um, it's just, effect of. Yeah, it just feels better. It just, yeah, exactly. Like you get more poke, um, better shields, mm -hmm. which I think is, is crucial. I, I I don't know. It just feels like more value from the summoner. Um, but here it is. Uh, standard sums from the our masteries from the Hecarim with phase rush get good in and out. Um, some Annie obviously arcane comet into the Kaisa Hella blades for the quick trades and Aatrox for the elongated uh, fights of conquer. We are getting there. A hundred percent is not quite a hundred percent in League of Legends terms. <laughs> Sadly. And here we go. We are now loading onto the rift. I think it'd be interesting if uh, Riot decided to do uh, like seasonal changes to the rift. That would be nice, honestly. Yeah, just... It would. I feel it will more come down to the balancing team to see. Or do you mean like just like like just visuals, like the changes. the greenery changes to snow, mm -hmm. like during winter. Up, oh, and just as we log in, we have a pause. Go <coughs> to the bathroom again, or something. If that's what's happening here. Oh, uh, maybe. But luckily, we are not live on stage, and uh, you don't have to pee in the Gatorade bottle. I couldn't even imagine. Luckily, the game is still tied at uh, 2.5k each. Uh, the CS is even across the board, so good close game so far, 17 seconds in. Now, do you think we'll make it past the 20-minute mark and see a Baron spawn or no? I'm trying to look at both teams, and I, I do think we are going to make it past the 20-minute mark this game. That's, that's, that's good to know. Definitely adds a little bit more to the competition feel of it, for sure. And seems like we have a five man or a four man stack, uh, which we thought would be possible. But there's a good uh, preemptive ward from the Lulu, so it kind of diffuses that bomb before it even gets started. Both top laners opting to just AFK their turrets. Um, now interesting. we do see the side of SP actually walking towards the bot lane Grush as a four man. Morgana's not leading though. Yeah. yeah. And a spear and a miss and a bind and a miss. And that's why you want to lead off with the Morgana. Morgana's going to be the one that sets you up for that. Nidalee already has ultimate. It's a crucial uh, for her to clear on the early stages so little broken riot giving early access to ultimates at level one <clears throat> yeah right what made you actually think of doing that true um i would assume we'd just see standard clears blue through a uh, full clear from nidalee red through full clear on hecarim i don't think there's going to be much action as far as the jungle standpoint goes maybe we we'll, might see something go down at uh scuttle crab whenever they do decide to come up and a bind and a miss in the back lane from Mac <clears throat> again. He is now 0 for 2 on binds. Happens to the best of us. Um, with this bot lane duo, uh, I don't play bot lane very much, but I would feel like I'd give the favor over to uh, AFS if I'd have to choose. Oh, definitely. Dodge the Morg mine, you just get free poke in on the uh, Morg and Bane. Yeah, Kaisa just Not has... Not to mention the Lulu shield makes sure you just uh, win every trade for the most part, especially early. Yeah, Kaisa just has a, a really great damage for pretty much all stages of the game, I feel. Indeed. And now, interesting choice, though. Um, Hecram didn't choose the full clear. He skipped his uh, golem, so he will be a camp down against the Nidalee. And Nidalee does have Pryo in the top lane, so she might be able to get a double scuttle. Not much action going on, just basic CSing for a little while. Indeed, just quick trades in the mid lane. Um, let me fix this. Lulu was still positioned at the top lane, and I was like, geez, she's <laughs> getting gapped in CS. <laughs> little uh, technical error there. And, and yep, we seem to be having a fight 
toward the uh, top scuttle. Like I said, thanks to Pryo, she should be able to lock this top scuttle down. I, she's pinging for an invade. I, I would rather her just go get the double scuttle. Like Indeed, she already knows she has the one scuttle. She knows Heck was also top side. Go bot, get your scuttle. Yeah, but now um, bot lane has gotten Pryo, so Hecarim should be able to get this bottom scuttle with ease. Uh, I don't think she should contest it. But because she did smite the last one, remember? So indeed. But AFS's bot lane is not moving, so it looks like she is going to get away with this. Yeah, she opts to give up the scuttle and roam down for a potential gank. Lands the spear easy, first blood kill over the vein. Meanwhile, uh, Yasuo is being chased down the river. Um. But he does get out and they just hear that scuttle crab for themselves. So, all in all, um, both jungles about even. Good first play going over to Vayne. And we have another pause. <coughs> now, it's four and a half minutes in. Even CS in the bot. Slightly, which is expected in the mid lane. Dead even in jungle with a slightly going over the Gnar, which is expected in the top lane. I, I don't foresee a lot of action until we start fighting for more objective based uh, things like the dragon. Indeed, and we were talking about how the Nidalee shouldn't be allowed this bot scuttle, but she definitely was taking it at first. What Do you think it was okay for her to give it up for the kill? Um, for her, it's not worth it, but the vein did get the kill, so, and we know what the vein can do once ahead, so, definitely wor could be worth it in the long run, and it makes that bot lane a little bit more bearable for the Morg vein duo. A good bind can result into a solid trade with the head vein. Indeed, indeed. <clears throat> I do want to note, we do see two TPs on the side of AFS and one TP on NAR, but we have Ignite on the Yasuo. And we also have Exhaust on the Lulu and Ignite on the Morg. Yeah, interesting Ignite on the Morg, to be honest. I'd want to exhaust that uh, backline threat that they're going to have on your team. But uh, we'll see if it actually impacts the game at all. Indeed, indeed. It was the top laner that DC'd. So let's hopefully uh, get him back on the rip shortly, and his technical issues are mild. <coughs> mm -mm. That being said, I think we have another um, pretty exciting game coming up at 10 o'clock as well with. Um, action between Big and uh, Vu. Um, Vu being the team that barely lost out in that massacre of a game to SP yesterday, looking to get back some revenge uh, from that tough loss. And I think uh, Big as well, just uh, taking a tough loss as well, want to bounce back and show that they are an up-and-coming dominant team as well. So definitely should be an exciting game to watch. Um, so stay tuned after this one. To catch all the action there. And she should be a good game. We're going to see if the top teams can uh, battle it out to see who's dominant. For sure, for sure. Let's see if we can get any word on what's going on. Unfortunately, we're not very far into the game, so there's not much to talk about. <laughs> um, I guess going through, there was no summoners really blown either through that first blood kill, so there's nothing to really punish either. I mean, 
we have Kaisa's heal and Mark's yeah. music night to help uh, make sure the kill went through. Yeah. So no real gank vulnerability. Okay, we seem like we have some uh, idea what's going on. His computer died. Um, I don't know if that means the laptop he was gaming on or his PC just crashed or what. Hopefully it was just a subtle malfunction and he can just load back up onto the rift. Because I'd, I'd hate to see this game go into a FF uh, due to something like that. I, th I think this can amount, especially based on the drafts, amount to a really competitive game. Indeed, we want a bloodbath. I feel like uh, SP will definitely give us that if they are given the opportunity. Intermission. Yeah, as we wait for the um, reload, we're just going to go to a quick intermission, um, and we will get back on the rift as soon as we figure out these malfunctions. Up. Oh. As I said that, I don't see he, he did say either. ready, so I think oh, he, he is did? back. Okay, okay so uh, cast your curse again. I, I go to intermission, and they say, nah, we're playing this one out, fam. So hopefully... We just get to some pause and get it back at it. We do see Annie taking. Ooh. A very aggressive trade. Uh, Yasuo going for the flash, trying to get that uh, last bit of damage to kill the Annie, but it was not enough. Not quite knowing that what he can do. Very close, though. Uh, well played uh, on the wind wall to counteract uh, Annie's Q. Indeed, indeed. Showing why he is a master of this champion, and people have been banning it. And thanks to Jungle being so healthy, Nidalee does do a full clear after her gank bottom before she gets a reset. And it seems like Hecarim's doing the same. We do see some slight bullying coming out on the side of Nar to the Aatrox, just... Showing that this is a range to melee matchup. Nearly is definitely ahead on tempo on that Hecarim though. Nidalee has gotten her reset off and already back on the map, whereas Hecarim is just now... It's still not resetting, it looks like he's trying to look top for something. And we got Nidalee passing toward bot lane. Looks like she should have an easy kill onto the Lulu. Lulu does flash, Nidalee follows up with the flash, and should secure this kill, I would think. One more auto should do it. She does That's not the secure the kill, behind. but she does manage to find the Kai'Sa after she flashes. So, did not walk away empty-handed. Hecarim ghosting into the Yasuo solo. Uh, let's see if Annie can close the gap. No luck. So Hecarim summoners down and he is low. So I, we do see the nearly punishing this with an invade. Yeah, the side of AFS taking some big L's here. Not making sure to... Uh, Annie full engages onto the Yasuo, but I don't think she's going to have the damage this early on to actually one-shot him. Uh, does maybe 60% of his HP, but that's going to be it. And with that down, uh, I feel like Yasuo is going to retaliate. 
Oh, definitely. He should definitely be punishing the fact that Tibbers is down and he knows that her flash is also down. And it seems like uh, instead of SP push down and are rotating for the free dragon. Indeed, knowing that Hecarim is chunked out and that he does need the back SP to should be securing this easy dragon. With that failed gank on mid, Hecarim now is super behind on tempo. Indeed, it was a very aggressive play from the Hecarim. Just knowing that his Annie has no way of truly gap closing the way to keep up mm -hmm. with his Egos combo. Yep, because she did previously blow flash from the Yasuo aggression. We do see the Aatrox actually catching up CS, even though he was being zoned off the way for the most part. And Hecarim coming in the gank. He's the Morgana. Kaisa follow up with the combo, and it's a free kill for Kaisa. And that's the combo I was referencing. Hecarim just sets up an easy R for the Kaisa. Free, free, and free some more. TP coming out from Annie back to the mid lane, so she won't have that if any other map plays happen. And we see Nidalee pathing upward. Now we're having Pryo in the top lane, uh, I think Nidalee is starting up this Rift Herald, uh, knowing that mid and top half first run. Indeed, objectives just be get, just given over to the side of XP for the simple fact that they do have the dominant lanes right now. Hecarim passing bottom up. I'd like to see him uh, do a follow-up gank here. They are a bit overextended. And he here he comes, charging in like a wrecking ball. Knocks the Morgana back. A questionable ult, but it doesn't matter. They do secure the kill. They should have a double kill. Onto the Kai'Sa. If Fane does flash, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. He is not meant for this world, and the double kill does go over to the right person. Great back-to-back -back gank from the Hecarim. Getting all summoners from the bot lane. Yasuo yeah, so ults under turret, and he flashes. The ignite should seal her fate, and it does. Great solo kill coming out from the mid laner. Yo Cosby showing his prowess on the Yasuo pick. Do they look for a dive here? He's going mega. Who oh, nearly canceled the Rift Herald? Close. Ooh, if that was old Rift Herald, that Rift Herald oh, would yeah. have been canceled. <laughs> yeah, they don't give you quite the window of opportunity anymore. Luckily for Nidalee. Evil getting hit by a bind, securing his fate towards the side of SP's turret. Lulu having to exhaust the vein to actually escape. Oh, just when you think Lulu they're coming back. Overextend. Yeah, just when you think they're coming back, they uh, kind of give it back away. It reminds me of uh, last night's game, where the vein and um, bars kept trading back and forth. Indeed, you don't want to do that, honestly, people. It's... No. And at 11 minutes, we are looking at Aatrox actually ahead in CS. Uh, clawing his way back, but a massive gap in the jungle on uh, nearly having priority over an entire map. Yasuo uh, far ahead by 20 CS on the Annie with a kill to his name, and the Kaisa and Vayne are even in kills and CS with a uh, assist advantage going over to the Vayne. So still a pretty close game, even though there is a 3k lead on the side of SP. Oh no. Oh, the huge bind into the Condemned, sealing her fate. Kaisa flashes to try to kill the Morgana. She does. Can she secure this solo kill onto the Vayne? And she cannot. Vayne comes up with a double kill and the roam just in case from the Yasuo. Cheeky Bush play from the Vayne. Indeed, paying off for the Hecram flying in onto the vein. It should, considering her dead, and she gets shut down. 
but I still feel she is drastically ahead, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. Indeed, Vayne being almost up a K on to the Kaisa. Hecarim just becomes a little bit tankier of a boy. Oh man, and the Yasuo just punishing. Indeed, the Annie just getting back to back kill. This is not looking good for the side of AFS. But lucky for them, Yasuo does not seem to be passing on his way to his 0 and 10 power spike, so he is uh, gonna, you know, spike a little bit later than most Yasuo players. And I didn't even see that one. Double kill from the uh, nearly. The solid roam down from the Nar with the just the roam up from the bot lane. This is just. They are going for gold here. Yeah, for sure. Considering it's only 13 minutes in, we have 15 kills this game. And the Vayne soloed out the dragon with the Nidalee coming in to help secure. Oof. They're trying to make a statement, I feel. Indeed, showing that they do have the team coordination to pull off these map roams to just secure the three turret mid and the dragon towards the bot side both at the same time. Indeed. Very very clean gameplay overall um, from them. I felt like it was uh, very chaotic yesterday, but it seems like they have a purpose today. Indeed. Do you think it has to come from uh, top lane being on more of a easier pick or the bot lane just knowing that they have some type of advantage <sighs> of that morgue buying land? <laughs> it's another solo kill coming out inside of Vayne onto the Kaisa. They just truly need to start warding this bush. They know she is going to camp that. And another solo kill coming run. in through the mid lane as well. Jesus, the people get, getting this gold are uh, not the people you want getting gold. It only gets worse from here. The shield bow completed against Annie's partial items. Aatrox opting to trade into the Nar, but Nar just simply hops away. No big deal. <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't need to fight you, Aatrox. My team is ahead. I can just sit back and just hold you up here. Exactly. You don't have to try to carry whenever you have other avenues of victory. <clears throat> now, we're only 15 minutes in, so there's no real bearing threat or anything like that. Um, we have the Rift Herald coming up shortly, so I would like to see SP just kind of take that second Rift Herald and try to snowball this game into a uh, impossible condition for their opponents. Indeed, if they can get a situation like the uh, wet versus big game that just happened a little while ago where they can just... And we to have another instant kill on to the Kai'Sa. F AFS just <gasps> not noticing that the... That SP is just sitting in wait. They have so many. They have the four division to know that the Kaisa is alone bottom, and they just punish it. Yeah, taking down this tier two, going looking toward the inhib turret on the bot lane. It's interesting though. You saw them pink ward by the Krug, so you would have thought they would have respected that a little bit more. And Hecarim charging in. Any flash ults? And a beautiful wombo combo coming out from the side of AFS. Vayne might get away. She has 1 HP. They are pursuing. Can Kaisa hit land the W? Bill Cosby showing why this is a strong pick for him. Securing the kill on Tila Lulu. Looking to see if he can get this heck kill as well. Crucial, Annie. Done saving Kaisa's life, and Vayne does manage to get out. And now Annie's getting beautifully kited by the Vayne. Looks Cosby securing the kill onto the Kaisa, looking nearly for the soloing the Hecarim. Jeez. And just when you think AFS clawing their way back, SP say not today and trade back a couple kills of their own. And here they go, securing the top. Rift arrow. 
and when we said a bloodbath should happen again, we had truly meant it. There's so many kills going over to the side of SP in quick succession. <laughs> For sure. That's just bleeding out, honestly. 17 minutes, 17 kills. Um, on the side of AFS, I we saw a small glimmer of hope there, right? So if they can synchronize and link up their uh, combo a little bit smoother, I I, th I still think they can possibly win a good team fight. Aatrox isn't behind, so he can wreak some havoc on the squishier targets of SB. It's just a matter of if they can set it up. And we have Hecarim engaging onto the Gnar top. Gnar with her. Uh, questionable ult not starting both of them but they trade back with the nidalee being there they should be able to secure this aatrox kill the nidalee looking for the execution cannot find it nara is back to small so he's not quite as impactful he does he fall though he does not and it looks like they should kill the aatrox aatrox does get lulu ulted though so he's still looking for the nidalee nidalee's just gonna pounce away and get away i feel like if uh, lulu did not make that roam it would have been a two for zero. Oh, most definitely that was a good roam from the lulu showing that she does have some map awareness and uh, can assist the team. And this might be another solo kill. It is. With ease. Aatrox not knowing it's warded. <laughs> Opting to trade into the Nidalee, not knowing her power. She is 8 or 7 and 0 at the time with the 25 stack Magias. And Hecarim's looking to trade into the Nidalee. Oh, a TP coming through from the side of Nar, though. And that's enough to scare him back. Oh, no. Just a slight comment, both I checked Discord. Do you see a way for AFS to truly come back if they cannot start to land this combo? Um, like I said, they have to link up perfect. And, oh wow. And just like that, they just got massacred. I, I don't, I think that's a wrap. Is this I, I, all she wrote? That was a clean AFS ace, that? like minus the Kaisa, like I don't see them coming back from this. Like how yeah, can truly, and we even see Bill Cosby tanking the turret some to show some BM back towards the Kaisa spamming her dance under turret. I, oh I, no! And is she punished for the BM? Almost, oh. but she slightly gets away with it. And they're opening up the uh, in hips at 20 minutes. So with full map control, vision control, it should be easy, Baron. Um, they would really have to throw this game, but I've seen crazier things happen in League of Legends, so we'll have to wait and see. And Hecarim is cowed side. out. We see the side of SP actually doing one of the old techs of standing behind the wall of the enemy base and waiting for people to walk towards the wall and catching them out there. And that should be it. Oh, and a hit the I, bind. I, I, this... uh... Morg does fall, but I don't it think it matters. It matter. Vayne and Nidalee just in this game. At a r amazing time. Of 21 minutes and looks like 13 seconds. Wow, 9 to 29. They made a so, statement. So, with this game, who truly gets MVP? Or was this just good team play all around? I, I feel like it was a good team play. Like, it was just very solid. Um, <laughs> For me, I would definitely probably say uh, Nidalee. She uh, created a lot of map pressure, farmed really well. Uh, she impacted the first uh, snowballing kill going to the vein. So, that'd be my personal one. She was sitting on 25 uh, Magi stacks with ease, with no real mm -hmm. threat of uh, her life being in danger. <laughs> <laughs> my love cannot be ma bought. DJ Maddie Matt. But uh that's yeah, my thoughts, so what I would about you? I actually have to agree with that, honestly. The Nidalee played her role very well, making sure to get her people ahead and being there for 
for the uh, times that matter, not to mention getting the objectives <laughs> when she could, when her when she knew that her people had prio and such. All right, very true. So uh, we'll see if the Nidalee has a microphone to interview or not. We're gonna get to welcome Cherry. Um, how are you doing today, buddy? After that, uh, insane win, dude. I'm doing great. I don't know why they left Nidalee up, but like, I'll take it. Nidalee definitely is a powerful oh, pick if it. played properly <laughs> for sure. And you demonstrated that with ease, I think. So, uh, sure. first question, man, uh, going into that game, um, how did you feel about the draft? Uh, it seemed like the other team had a pretty solid uh, team comp if executed properly. Uh, were you worried at all? Oh, not in the slightest. There was no way their team was going to be able to outplay ours. I, I was not worried about it in the slightest because we could easily just play back and poke them to death or we could rush in and get a pick. I, I don't think their team had any chance of winning with their comp, honestly. All right. Definitely uh, showed that with uh, that presentation on Nid, that game for sure. Uh, Mr. Senna, you got a question? Uh, no, I... I, I... <laughs> Fair enough. Um, well, I mean, it was kind of a stomp, so there's not much to talk about, but... <laughs> uh, I, was I, kinda... I, guess we, I guess we won because we just took away their comfort picks. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but... And interesting, they left uh, comfort picks for y'all, um, giving your mid laner Yasuo and Echo possibilities, um, <laughs> which, after his demonstrations, I would never give him Echo, but that's just me. So, going into playoffs, because I believe that was y'all's last game um, until then, are you looking forward to any team playing, or you have full confidence that y'all are just going to run this tournament? Oh, no, this is going to be easy. I'm not worried about it, again, in the slightest. My team is cracked, honestly. If you put $1,000 on us, you'll make your money back tenfold. Big words coming out from the side of SP, and I'm excited to see how they play because they have not shown up most of the season. So the times they do play, they show up big. <laughs> so Indeed. it'll be an exciting playoffs. I can't not wait for sure. Yeah, um, thanks, for, thanks uh, for coming, Cherry. Honestly, uh, you had a very good showing, and it showed... And as Matt has been saying, SP to the moon. <laughs> as long as he's got us, this team right here, he can keep spamming that. True. He can go get a, a billboard somewhere. I will I will <laughs> gladly uh, be happy to see y'all in the finals. It will be one hell of uh, a matchup, best of five, I feel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, have a good one, man. You too. Thanks for having me. You guys have a great night. You too. Back to you. And that will conclude uh, the end of this Bloodbath rapid race of a game. Um, as you saw, SP overcoming AFS in a just stomp of a fashion. Um, trying to make a statement here. Definitely showing that they are well on their way to the moon, as DJ Matty Matt constantly uh, says. So this is FN Bowtie Doctor signing off until next time.